Hi everyone. Today we're going to start chapter 11, which is data analysis and statistics. So today we will be looking at 11.1, which is using normal distributions. And if ever in your life you've heard something about a bell curve, that's what we're going to talk about today. So first we need to do a quick recap of standard deviation. Now they change notations on us a little bit, and I don't exactly know why, but uh, they are now using mu in replace of x bar, but they mean the exact same thing. This is your lowercase sigma, okay, and that is our symbol for standard deviation. So to find standard deviation, you're first going to find the mean of the data set. Then you're going to do all your numbers minus the mean. You're going to square them all, add them all together, divide by how many numbers you had, and square root it, and that gives you your standard deviation. Remember, your standard deviation tells you typically, like on average, how far your data points are from the average, like the average from the average. And this formula can be found on page 314 of your journal if you want to go there and put a big star by it. So when we talk about a normal distribution of data, we're looking at a bell curve. So here we have, this is a, your picture of a bell curve, okay? Um, so the, the high part is in the middle, which would be where the mean is. So under a typical bell curve or, or a normal distribution, okay, your data should, should fall under these kind of parameters, okay? So your mean is in the middle. Remember, that's your x bar, which they changed to be the mu. So your mean is in the middle. Then 68% of your data falls within one standard deviation above. So this is your mean plus one standard deviation or your one standard deviation below. So if I take my, my average and I add a standard deviation and I subtract a standard deviation, 68% of my data should fall within that, which would mean 34% on both sides. If I take my mean and I add two standard deviations or subtract two standard deviations, then 95% of my data should fall in that. And if I do three standard deviations, I should be able to get 99.7% of my standard deviation. Outside both ends, you have a 0.15% that lies outside of your three standard deviations. Okay, That is how that, that look there and that where things fall is what we call a normal distribution. And we can use this to find the probability that something will land in a certain area. By the way, this is on page 316 of your journal, if you want to make note of that. And I would definitely be bookmarking this picture to help us out today. So looking at your extra practice, we're going to start out with number one. And these are probabilities. So this says what's the probability. X is like a, is a, a value from your data set. So that a value from your data set is less than or equal to the mean minus two standard deviations. So the mean minus two standard deviations is right here. So it is saying what is the probability that a value falls below this point? Here, let me, I'll draw that in in a color there. What's the probability you're going to have a number that falls below that line? Well, if I add up my percents that's down there, right? I'm going to get 2.5%. So you're looking at 2.5% out of 100% because that's your total. And if I do 2.5 divided by 100, that's going to be 0 0.025. So my probability that something's going to land down there is 0 0.025. So again, you're just really adding the, the, the percents that it can be in these spots. So let's look at number three. Three says the probability that some data set is less than or equal to the mean plus two standard deviations. 
Well, the mean plus two standard deviations is here, and it wants the probability that something's going to be less than that. So you can actually go through and add 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0.15. Or total, this makes 100%, and you could just do 100% minus these, and that would be what's left. So 100% minus 2.5 should be 97.5. So 97.5 over 100 would be 0.975. And so that's your chance that something is going to fall in those areas. All right, and the last one we're going to do here, see if I can erase this so we can see. There we go. All right. So what's the probability that a data point is going to fall between one standard deviation below or three standard deviations above? So that's going to be one standard deviation below is going to be here and three standard deviations above is going to be here. So you're just going to add those numbers. Add 34, 34, 13 and a half and 2.35. So let me add them real quick. So I get 83.85 out of 100 total, which is going to be 0.8385. Okay, so probability, remember, is favorable over total, and so you're just looking at the favorable percent over the total percent, which is going to be 100. All right, let's look at number 7. 7 says the scores for a math course test are normally distributed, so that tells you right there it's in the bell curve, with a mean of 61. So I'm instead of drawing it as a bell curve, I'm going to do... I'm going to do a line. So here's my 61 in the middle, and that'd be the top of my bell curve. Then if I find my three standard deviations above and below, I'm going to add 11, which gives me 72, add 11, which gives me 83, add 11, which gives me 94, subtract 11, which gives me 50, subtract 11, which gives me 39, subtract 11, which gives me 28. So that it, that's like the top of my bell curve. It's coming down from there. Okay. About what percent of the students taking the test have scores between 72 and 83? So because I drew this out, then I can look there, be like, oh, well, that is, that's like the, the two standard deviations away. And if you refer back to your, your graphic that we were looking at, what percent falls in that, that area right there? And it should be 13.5%. So we got that just by looking at the picture we've been using, okay? So the next question is about what percent of the students taking the test have scores less than 50? So right here, less than 50. So if I go and I add up, here was 13.5%, here was 2.35%, uh, and here was 0.15%. If I add those up, we should be at 16%, okay? You really need to keep that one graphic available because you're going to use it very, very, fairly regularly. So the last thing we're going to look at is, can I tell by a, from a histogram if I have a normal distribution? And you're really just looking at your, your bell curve. So if we really got down to the nitty gritty, your median and your mean should both be in the middle, okay? Um, so looking at number nine, number nine, I'm going to say is not a, a normal distribution because it kind of goes up this way. It, it, you would say it's skewed to the right. Okay. So probably your, your middle number, your median is a little more someplace to the right than in the middle. Okay. Now looking at number 10, and we're just, we're just looking at these to, to figure it out. This one, it's not a perfect bell curve, but it's not bad. So we're going to say that, yes, this one does. Your mean and your median should both be somewhere around that middle point, which is what you're looking for. All right, let me know if you have any questions on this. I will be live later this week. Hope you have a good day.